Hi guys, so today we're here to talk about climate change, or more precisely, to let the books talk about climate change. Now discussions surrounding global warming, climate change, the environment are not new, but they have become more and more prevalent in our everyday lives, in our uh, media outlets, and the way those conversations are affecting our decisions. We've kind of passed the point now where we can hide from what is going on to the environment around us and how it's affecting both us in the present, but how it's going to affect us in the not too distant future. But like a lot of you, I'm sure I sometimes find all the information out there incredibly overwhelming. I don't really know where to get from my information from, I don't know how to relate to it, and for me, with with any topic, books are the place I go to to do that. So I thought I would sit down today and recommend to you both some non-fiction and some fiction that ranges from children's to adults literature and that deals with global warming, climate change or the environment around us. Obviously all of these books deal with incredibly serious topics but they all do it in their own unique way that is incredibly inviting and accessible and helps you understand things yourself and kind of make sense of it all. They may very well also inspire you to do what you can to change the world around you a little bit more and perhaps put pressure on those that are having the biggest impact to make the changes that we all need to save the planet that we live on. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit more about the books. Now, this video is actually very kindly being sponsored by Granta in honour of the publication of one of their latest titles, Weather by Jenny Ophel, which also makes this the perfect book to kick things off with. This is a piece of literary fiction that only just carries across the 200 page mark, but still manages to have so much impact in so few pages, partly because of the absolutely gorgeous writing style that the author has. I had never read anything by this author previously, but having read reviews of her other books, I can completely see why people are so enraptured by her prose. It has a slightly experimental format in that it's laid out like little bite-sized moments into the protagonist's minds and interpretations of what's going on around her. She is a librarian but she's recently picked up a bit of part-time work for a professor that lectured her when she was at college and is running a podcast all about the natural environment and the changes that are going on around it. Lizzie, our protagonist, spends time travelling with this woman, listening to the podcasts, but also answering all of the emails from those who have also been listening, whether they be climate change activists or deniers, whether they be from the right wing or left wing spectrum of politics, she's processing all of their thoughts and all of their reactions to what they're saying and kind of figuring out where she fits inside that. She's aware of what's going on, she realises that the planet is in danger but she's also just existing like all of us are. As an ordinary human being, she has a husband, she has a son, she also has other family members that constantly seem to rely on her and she's kind of navigating what is the reality for many of us in the 21st century which is simply existing with all of this knowledge in your mind and what exactly do you do with that, how do you process it and from the perspective of me as a reader it was such a interesting thought experiment, it really made me think about myself and how I live in the modern world, how I process all of this information, what do I do with it. So all in all I just thought this was a completely absorbing piece of fiction that could be the beginning of a much deeper thought process for many of us. But I would like to switch between fiction and non-fiction as we go on, so my next recommendation is This Is Not A Drill, The Extinction Rebellion Handbook. This is a collection of short essays by various different contributors, all the way from ex-politicians to ordinary people on the ground at Extinction Rebellion protests in the UK. And what I really appreciated about this book is that it's put into two different sections. The first section is all about the realities of climate change and how global warming is affecting our planet, how long we really have before it's too late. And then the second section is all practical aspects about how you can get involved in climate change activism like the Extinction Rebellion groups. Which means this book covers everything from environmental science to dealing with getting arrested. And it just manages to pack so much into a short space and it's such a great primer for those trying to get involved trying to appreciate why you might want to get involved and, and get kickstart that like activism in your own life. Naturally non-fiction like this can feel a little bit overwhelming, a little bit doom and gloom, but I think throughout these essays they retained a sense of hope and encouragement and solidarity and camaraderie within them that I think is entirely necessary, particularly if you're looking to get involved more in the practical side of activism which can seem a little bit intimidating if you've not done much of that before and I really enjoyed that. I think this book contains a ton of really useful information. I think it will help you better understand why the issues surrounding climate change are so 
important as of now and help you feel a little bit less lost or out to sea. But we then have a dystopian novel and I actually think the dystopian and apocalyptic genre is so interesting when it comes to discussing climate change and um, global warming and the environment because for a long long time dystopian has done our thought experiments for us. It has taken in fiction form often concepts that are very relevant now and examined where they could be in the future. Think a little bit like one of the recent episodes of Doctor Who. But the dystopian that immediately sprung to mind when I was thinking about climate change was American War by Omar El Akkad. This book is set in the year 2074 which really isn't that long away and during what is described as the Second American Civil War. Now this political turmoil has come to a head because of both political and environmental changes that have impacted the lives of people living in America. So particularly rising sea levels which mean that our protagonists are basically living on a house in stilts that is incredibly fragile and dangerous and insecure. Because of this changing and evolving environment and environmental disasters, our family also end up finding themselves as refugees. And this book very much explores the way in which life can radically change very quickly, how we can all be in this absolutely horrendous and terrifying position with very little notice because the world around us refuses to change. It's a hard-hitting futuristic novel but it feels incredibly real and incredibly relevant to what is currently going on around the world. Next up for non-fiction we have something short, sweet, but certainly no less impactful and that is No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. Let's be honest, we've all heard of Greta Thunberg, pictured here on the back of my library copy. She is a young Swedish activist currently fighting to have the discussion surrounding climate change be made part of the mainstream narrative. Greta is by no means painting herself as a climate scientist. What she has done, as we should all really do, is listen to the scientists out there that are telling us what's going on, really see the evidence with our own eyes that we can witness on the news, and accept that we need to change. Businesses, politics, governments, individuals need to change. This book collects together all of those speeches which Greta has given at various different events on that topic that remind us how imminent this issue is and how we all need to come together to do something about it from a top level down. And I think just having all those speeches in one place just really enforces that upon you and because of that it's well worth checking out. I did mention that I also had some children's literature to mention though because I think something that's really important when it comes to any subject like this is making it accessible for all ages but equally both of the younger reader books I'm going to mention here I think are great for adults. I enjoyed them as an adult because sometimes they're just a little bit more straightforward and provide an excellent introduction to quite an intense topic. So my fiction recommendation is actually a graphic novel and that is Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill. This is a light fantastical graphic novel set in a seaside town where a little girl finds a sickly aquacorn and tries to nurse it back to health. This book specifically deals with the effects of of issues like overfishing in our seas, um, the erosion of the coral reef and how what's going on in our oceans heavily impacts our environment around the world, how it affects all of our lives and it can seem so out of sight what's happening under the sea but actually it changes the whole planet and it changes all of our lives and therefore it really matters how we treat our oceans and what I loved about this book is it has these gorgeous illustrations, this wonderful like fantastical storyline with the magical creatures that live down there and the really endearing characters and families that have to address questions of their lifestyle and how it's maybe not what is best for the ecosystem. But also I came away feeling so educated because not only does the storyline deal with that issue but at the back Katie O'Neill has included all of this information about the coral reef and our oceans and that ecosystem um, and organisations that are doing things to um, help with the impact that overfishing is having and I found it so interesting. I was not expecting it going into this book but with the lightest touch I felt like it really made me so much more aware of um, something that's actually really really important to all of our lives and of course I just enjoyed consuming it in such a beautiful format. But then for a similar age range but also for everybody is Plastic Sucks by Doogie Pointner. Yes Doogie Pointner of McFly. But aside from his musical career Doogie is also a massive climate change activist and is constantly fighting against global warming and um, the impact that 
we are having on our changing environment. So he's taken that experience which has led to massive changes like the um, banning of microplastics here in the UK and products and set it all out in this book. He has explained exactly where plastic comes from, like why it's become such a massive part of our life, but also how disposable plastic and single-use plastic is the worst possible way that we can use this material and why it has such a negative impact on the world around us. It contains science, but really accessible science because I am not a scientist and it made sense to me. But also provides practical changes that individuals can make as well as talks to those involved in bigger organisations that, that are currently out there involved in projects that are trying to improve our environment. And it's just so packed full of information, but it never feels overwhelming. In fact, it all just feels perfectly paired together, really accessible, really interesting. And again, I think something we all look for in our non-fiction is a little bit hopeful. It makes you feel like we can make a difference. And we can if we listen to what we're being told and if we act on what we're being told. And I think discussing literature and reading literature about these topics is something that is a part of that. And we'll continue to make sure that climate change remains on the political agenda and no one can really find any excuse not to listen. But those were only six books and there are so many more out there. So I would love to hear from you what your recommendations are of non-fiction or fiction that in some way interact with the issues of climate change and global warming and our environment, whether they be children's graphic novels or adult literary fiction or anything in between. I would love to read more, learn more, discuss more and do more. So I think having your recommendations will help me do that and hopefully these recommendations will help you do that. Thank you again so much to Granta for sponsoring this video. I think it just provided me with an awesome opportunity to talk about a really important topic and recommend to you some incredible books. Once again, do check out Weather. It is a genuinely beautiful and absorbing novel and I will definitely be reading more by this author in the future. So thank you so much to Granta for sending this to me and sponsoring this video. I would love to hear your recommendations in the comments down below. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!